Can you believe it's been 25 years since that legendary Penn State football team of 1994 won the Big Ten, the Rose Bowl? Sure enough, they're honoring that team Saturday at the Penn State game, and Kyle Brady, the great tight end from that squad, joins us now to talk about it. 25 years, Kyle. Give me an idea which guy is the closest to being as in shape now as they were back then. Well, I'd like to think it's me, uh, but that might not necessarily be the case. Uh, Terry Killens, I just ran into him, one of our linebackers who played with the Titans for a while. He's actually refereeing his first ah. NFL game this weekend as an umpire, and he's looking good, man. He's only about 220 and lost some weight. <laughs> I'm still a little puffy in the face. I got some work to do to catch up to TK. You look beautiful in my eyes, Kyle. Uh, Thank you. What You're are, so kind. Give me an idea of your itinerary. What are the things you guys are all doing this weekend? So we actually just watched a little bit of the walkthrough slash practice over in Haluba Hall, the indoor practice facility. Coach Franklin was very gracious to throw out an invite to us to come in. And tonight we're actually going to meet at a local establishment, kind of a little private room, and tell some Joe Paterno stories, the old uh, high-pitched Brooklyn accent. I'm sure will come out in a few stories tonight. And uh, Football Letterman Club's putting that on. Uh, Wally Richardson, one of our alumni, is actually back here who acts as the liaison between us and the current team. So uh, there'll be that. And then tomorrow they're going to have a pregame tailgate for us at Lebrano Park, the, uh, the Spikes um, minor league team baseball park, and also the, state or the uh, Penn State baseball team plays in there as well. Beautiful park right next to Beaver Stadium. Just gorgeous facilities all around this place. And um, so we're going to enjoy a little pregame tailgate, go into the game, halftime introduction, that type of thing, and just uh, enjoy a great evening together. Well, you guys are going to have so much fun, obviously, reminiscing. The first thing, when you think back to that season, just the first image that pops into your head is what? Man, first image would probably be the Illinois game. Uh, we had our backs against the wall. We were down 21 to nothing in the first quarter. I've gotten to be friends with some of the guys on the Illinois team, particularly the defense, Kevin Hardy in particular. We were teammates for oh, six years or so in Jacksonville, and I uh, got to know some of the other guys on that team. And I mean, they thought they had us, I mean, and, and, and it seemed like they did. You know, in the first half, we were down uh, at the end of the half at 28 to 14. A um, lot of adversity, uh, you know, just showed the character of that team to be able to come back. Uh, you know, we were the number one team, offensive team in the country. They were the number one defensive team. Dana Howard, the all everything middle linebacker said, he guaranteed before the game, actually, kind of a Joe Namath guarantee. He said, if our offense can score 28 points, we will win this game. And they scored 31 points, and they, did, in <laughs> fact, did not win the game. So there was a lot of little subplots, you know, even when we got to Illinois. Uh, we were in a very noisy hotel, fraternity parties all around us. Power just happened to go out somehow <laughs> in the middle of the night. You know, we didn't have a hot breakfast. All the things we were normally used to, our whole routine was completely changed and uh, thrown off track. And so, and then all of a sudden we go out there and we're getting hammered in the first half, which we weren't used to. I mean, we were used to putting the hammer down on people. I mean, we beat Ohio State 63 to 14 that year. That was, no one did that kind of thing. And that was a talented Ohio State team. So, um, just it showed that, that, I think that game summarized the character of that team and the ability that that team had and, and, and the togetherness we had, which is something that we're, we worked on for years together. I mean, eating and sleeping, drinking together, hanging out, doing everything. Uh, the, the, the sense of brotherhood, the sense of accountability to one another was unlike anything I'd ever been a part of. Do you, do you remember at all 25 years ago of you guys thinking, boy, I wish there was a playoff of sorts? Was that, was that ever in your mind at all at the end of the year? Absolutely. Actually, I just was discussing that today with some of the other my former teammates. Uh, it was actually a perfect year. It was a perfect setup for a BCS scenario, which right. was pre-playoff. The two best teams in the country, the two only two undefeated major teams in the country were us and Nebraska, so it would have set up perfectly for a BCS scenario. But even beyond that, I mean, it would have been an awesome year for a playoff, a four-team or maybe even more. I mean, I still think it should go to maybe eight teams uh, type scenario. Um, however, that could be worked out. But a four-team playoff would have been awesome. We and I think I, I got to know Nebraska players that were on that team, and they swore up and down, you know, that they would have beaten us. We <laughs> swear up and down we would have beaten them. We would have been willing to go out literally and meet them on a field in Nebraska. You know, no fans. You can have some cameras there if you want. You know, whatever, and just play them and just see who was the best. You know, I mean, who. When you put that much time, that much energy, sweat, blood, tears into becoming the best you can possibly be, and you go out to the, on the field and you prove that you were better than everyone you played, who doesn't want to know if there's some other bully out there, some other big shot that claims, and, and he also went undefeated, 
I mean, it's like having a heavyweight title match, right? You got to get the two together. And it's just such a shame that at that time, in that era, there wasn't a way to do that. Oh, man, to be a fly on the wall of the conversations you guys are going to be having all of Friday and Saturday. Kyle, thanks so much for your time, man. Have a blast this weekend. Absolutely, Mike. I appreciate it, man.